Right, we're going to spend a few minutes talking about the different types of video effect that are available within Premiere Pro. Now, as you can see, I've brought in another clip, and I've only done this so you don't get too bored looking at the same clips over and over again. Now, to my eyes, this clip doesn't really reflect the contrast or the lighting or even the colour temperature of the reality of being on that beach. For whatever reason, the camcorder hasn't quite caught the image in its natural light. So as we start looking at all these different video effects available to us, we'll look at ways that we can control this, or at least correct it. So first of all, I'll come down to my effects tab, so that my effects panel is revealed down here. And you remember this, don't you, from the previous tutorial? Simply open up the video effects category, and then within here, you're going to see all these different subcategories. At this screen resolution, there are a few more at the bottom, so you might need to scroll down. Now just to start us off, I'm going to look at a couple of unusual effects that are featured inside this video category. We have clip name and we have time code. Well these are used if we want to superimpose either the clip's name over the top of our clip or even the time code as their name implies. For example, if I left click on the time code option and drag and drop onto my clip, well as you can see now, the time code is superimposed centrally at the bottom of our view and it's reading out a zero at the moment because my CTI is at the beginning. Anyway, let's undo it. I'll edit and undo. You can probably guess what clip name does, so I'll try it, and there you go. We now see the actual clip's name superimposed in exactly the same position. I'll edit and undo once more. Okay, so those are a special kind of effect in that it adds something to our clips. In these cases, textually added some information superimposed on the clip. But on the whole, all the other types of video effects can be broken down into two categories. And what I mean by that is, we can perhaps categorise the available effects into two distinct types, fixed or inherent effects, and standard effects, which really involve filters. That said, these two main categories can be further broken down, as we'll see. Now before I look at any more effects, let me just explain. What is meant by a fixed effect is an effect such as motion effects or opacity, that relates to every video clip on the timeline, irrespective of whether they are utilised. What I mean is, even if you don't adjust a clip's opacity, i.e. how much of it can you see, is it totally visible, or does it fade away, to partial visibility, to invisibility? Well, even if we don't adjust our clip's opacity, it is actually being implemented, even if set to 100%, because we have full visibility. By comparison, standard effects are those sort of filter type of effect that gets applied to a clip to modify its appearance in some way. For example, we could convert a video clip into black and white. Now speaking of the colour of a clip, if I come back up to the top and open up this adjust category, then you can see within here we have quite a number of different effects that allow us to adjust our clip to either correct it or improve it in some way. We saw in the previous tutorial how to use this shadow highlight effect, which might be useful for this clip, seeing as the contrast isn't great. However, first of all, I'm going to use this effect, Auto Levels. And what this will do is Premiere Pro will automatically determine, by inspecting our video clip in the background, it will then try and determine what the level should be automatically. So I'll left click and drag onto my clip, and there you go. We now get a deeper blue sea, and perhaps the overcompensated orangeness of the sunset on the sand has now been reduced. OK, now it's not done a bad job, but let's try something else. I'll go to Edit and Undo. This time, let's try Auto Colour. I'll left click and drag this onto our clip. OK, now to my eyes that's a little bit better. It's a little bit more subtle, and seems to reflect the reality better. By the way, you don't have to just have one effect. You can start combining effects. So at the moment, we've got this auto colour in place. If I'm happy with this, but also want to add a different effect as well, then I can do. I'll get back to that in a moment, because with my auto colour, I just want to get this right first. And what we would need to do is come up to the effect controls panel, and then within here, you'll see because we've added this auto colour in, it now features as part of our video effects category. There it is there, auto colour. OK. So really what you would do is you would go through all these different settings and start playing around with it until you see what you think is the correct version of the reality of being on that beach. Now I'm going to leave that though, simply so we can speed up this process. So now if I want to combine effects, I'll come back down to the effects panel and this time to try and bring out the shadows and the highlights. 
I'm going to use that shadow highlight that we've seen before. So left click and then drag this onto the clip. And then now we have a combination of the auto color and this shadow highlight. And if we look in our effect controls panel again, then we can see that we have those two effects, auto color and shadow highlight. Incidentally, if you don't want to use the effect controls panel, you can come back down here to your clip. And we've seen this previously as well, but just to remind you, if you right click there where it says effects, then you'll see all the available effects that we are utilizing that we see in our effect controls panel. We have motion, opacity, time remapping, and those two that we've just added in, auto color and shadow stroke highlight. Okay, so you can adjust down here if you prefer. For the moment though, I'm going to undo this, so I'll have to come up to edit and click on undo a few times until I revert back to our starting point. And I know how far I have to go because down on our timeline, my render line now reverts back from red because we've applied those clips and it reverts back to green. Meaning at the present time, if we were to play this back, because I've previously rendered it, then this would play back smoothly. If you want to access and render your clips, simply come up to sequence. And there you'll see these options. I chose render in to out, i.e. I wanted all this clip from the in point to the out point to be rendered, so that it all plays back smoothly. But you'll notice these other settings as well. Right, I'm going to finish up for this tutorial, but we'll continue in the next tutorial by looking at further effects that we can use when we want to either correct or improve our footage.